Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is The Best Damn EDC, and today I would like to talk to you about something that has been a constant in my, not necessarily my carry, I don't carry this on my person every day, but it's been in my backpack every day for years. I really don't go much of anywhere without this, and this is my knife maintenance kit. It's changed a lot over the years, but it has basically been pared down to the essentials that I need to do any kind of maintenance to most knives. There are obviously going to be some special knives like hinderers and sure Gorovs and stuff that require special tools. But for the most part, I'd say 95% or more of my knives can be disassembled, cleaned, put back together and ready to go with everything that's in this kit. So that's what we're talking about today, my knife maintenance kit. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. So you may be wondering why I need a knife maintenance tool, or maybe why you do. Maybe you don't need one. I have found that it it really helps me because I have my office here and I have my house. They used to be just a few miles away from one another, and if I needed something in the middle of the day or at night or whatever, I could hop over here, grab what I needed, and go home, and it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, because it's 20-ish minutes to my office, I don't wanna make that trip if I forgot like a screwdriver or the knife that I wanna do some maintenance on or whatever, I, I don't make that trip now. And I found that I could have all the stuff in both places, but I like having a kit. It's got all the right stuff. I know that everything I need to do anything to most knives is in this pouch. The only knives that I couldn't do maintenance on with this pouch would be a Chris Reeve knife, which at some point I did have the tools I needed in here, but I don't. Hinderer and a sure Gora. I have my own solutions for those. Anyway, I found that it was just easier for me to have a pouch wherever I was versus having stuff here, having stuff at home. I can just have it in this pouch and carry this in my backpack and I've got it anywhere I go. I found that was easier. But the other question you may be asking is why am I taking my knives apart so much? It basically comes down to a cathartic thing. I really enjoy taking knives apart and seeing how they're constructed and seeing the different decisions that different makers make when putting a knife together and building it. like. I like seeing the inner workings of all of these things just for my own personal enjoyment. So regarding this knife maintenance kit, originally I started with a Maxpedition pouch. I think it was the Micro Pocket Organizer, I believe is what it was called. I can't remember. I did a video on that maintenance kit, um, I think, or it was a tool kit or something. I, that whole thing became my knife maintenance kit. And then I ended up upsizing it to this garage built gear pouch, which I included when I did a what's in my bag video, not long after that other one, I found that this pouch was amazing. I really like this pouch from Garage Built Gear, even more than the Mighty Pouch. But the problem with this is it takes up a lot of space in my backpack, but also because there's so much extra space in this pouch, I ended up filling it with a bunch of stuff that I didn't need. So this became excessively large and heavy. So I decided to downsize. I pared it down to just what I need to take my knives apart. But on this Slim 2.0, you get a tiny hook and loop section right here. You can put your patches on it if you want. I wish I had something that just said knife maintenance or something, I don't know. Um, then we've got a pocket here that is Velcroed as well. So you can slide some stuff down in there. I never use these pockets on the outside of pouches ever. Then you have Molly on the back so you could attach this to something if you wanted. But inside is where all the good stuff happens. And in here, we have a lot, there's a lot to unpack. Let's start with, I think the most contentious thing in here, which would be the lube. So as you can tell, I have KPL or knife pivot lube inside. I don't love KPL. I also didn't get too wrapped up in the controversy around KPL. I think it was dumb. I did state what I thought about it, which is the whole thing was dumb. The cease and desist was dumb because it was just about the, the type of bottle they were using the product inside, totally different, like whatever. I don't really care about that, but I don't love KPL as a lube. I like KPL heavy quite a bit, actually. I put this on the detent ball and it lubes the detent track and it's really good for breaking in a knife, in my opinion. But the KPL original that you use for uh, bearings and washers or whatever, I, I don't love it. I found that it wears pretty quickly and it, it just, after maybe about a week or two, it starts getting kind of dry feeling and gritty. So it's not my favorite, um, but KPL Heavy is definitely gonna be one that stays in the kit. But honestly, my favorite lube is Benchmade Blue Lube. Um, I, I like both Nano Lube and Benchmade Blue. Uh, the reason that I don't carry this in the pouch is this lid, no matter how well you secure it, 
will always leak. This is not meant to be going anywhere with you. This is a desktop lube. Otherwise, it's gonna leak everywhere. Uh, anytime I found one of these bottles, I, in fact, I put one in the center console of my truck, it leaked everywhere. It wasn't even that much lube, but it's lube. So when it gets out, it just kind of goes everywhere and gets on everything, uh, makes a mess. But I do really like this as pivot lube. Well, look what finally decided to arrive. I waited and waited to shoot this video for my nano oil to arrive. And uh, literally about two hours after we finished shooting this, this was delivered. Uh, I just got tired of waiting, but now it's here. And this is what I was talking about. These come in this pin style tube that fits in here a lot better. So this is nano oil, tin weight. There's also gunny glide and I believe shank shield. They all come in the same pin style tube with this really nice needle applicator, but they fit inside something like this and they don't leak like, like the Benchmade Blue. So I tried to wait and put this in here for the video. Uh, fortunately it arrived just in time but yeah that's the lube that's going to be in here moving forward i guess that brings us next to loctite i loctite the pivot on every knife that i use what i use is loctite 248 that's blue loctite do not put red loctite on your knives um, but i prefer it in this glue stick form because you can really control better how much Loctite is getting on the screws. You can take the screw, dip it in this, kind of roll it around and get what you need and not over Loctite and not under Loctite. The tube versions that, that kind of pour out, man, they just make a mess. I don't like it. So I use blue Loctite 248 in the glue stick form. Next, let's talk about this thing. I really don't use this a whole lot, but it has come in handy a couple of times in a very near future video, I'm gonna be talking about my sharpening method and this will come up in that video for sure and why I find it handy to have in this little maintenance kit. But with this, this is the uh, Benchmade WorkSharp collaboration. I think this is called the Edge Maintenance Tool. You have a little ceramic rod here for honing your edge and then you have a strop. And both of these have 25 degree guides. That's only handy if all of your knives are sharpened to 25 degrees. I sharpen some of mine at 20, some of them at 17, some at 25. So this is only handy for some of those knives. The rest of the time, you really have to just freehand and get the right angle on your own. But regardless, uh, I keep this in here because it's not that big and it does come in handy from time to time. And since we're talking about that, I do have this in here. This is from NAFS or Ben Peterson. He sent this to me and this is just a strop. This is actually kind of small. You can use this. You can hook this on something and strop. You hold it, hook it, hold it with the other hand and you can strop like any other strop. Back in this pocket here, I've got a few different things and this is just for cleaning. This is really all these are. Um, we have some alcohol prep pads just for cleaning off all the oil before applying my own and then some cotton swabs or Q-tips for cleaning out like inside uh, a Chicago screw that's a pivot or cleaning out holes or whatever. If it's really small and hard to get to with your finger and one of these pads, you can just put a little alcohol on it and use a Q-tip. So this is just for cleaning, nothing too exciting, but I just keep those in there always. In the back pocket here, I have a Field Notes notebook that has literally never been written in, nothing. And I put this in here with the intention of writing down the different degrees that I sharpen my knives at and everything. Maybe eventually I'll actually do it, but it's just nice to have a piece of paper in here just just because, but doesn't get used a whole lot. I'm gonna be honest. Back here, I also have a mechanical pencil from Tactile Turn. Uh, yes, pencil, not a pen. And this was originally meant to be used with the field notes, but obviously, as I've told you, I haven't used it. I've used the pencil some, not the field notes, but maybe eventually I will actually write things down. Probably not but it's there in case I need it. You might be wondering what this thing is. Uh, if you think this is a pen or something, you would be wrong. This is one of the best watch tools I've ever had. So this isn't just for knife maintenance, I guess. Um, this is a spring bar removal tool and just a pen. If you have a, a, a drilled lug, you can access the spring bars from the outside or the spring bar tool from the inside. When I'm here at the office, I will use this little gun maintenance mat, the Lyman one that I've talked about a million times. And this is just to keep screws from rolling around everywhere. When I'm at my shop, I use the uh, Cheat Sheet Pro from JRW. But if I'm anywhere else where I don't feel like grabbing one of these bigger things, I will simply use this. This is the original Cheat Sheet from JRW. And all it's meant to do is to hold body screws. Take a screw out and put it in here so it doesn't roll off the table and fall into the carpet, into the abyss where you're never, ever, ever gonna find it. So to avoid that, 
Just use one of these little guys right here and keep your screws from rolling off the table. That's all it is. I also have a pair of tweezers, which are really good for holding those pivot screws and tiny little body screws so they don't go flying. Conversely, when you're using tweezers, sometimes they do go flying because you're using tweezers. I have fat fingers and sometimes I need to pick up tiny little body screws with tweezers instead of my fat fingers. All right, and the last two things. Um, we're gonna talk about this one first. So we have a set of Weeha bits. These are the ones that you can get from Urban EDC Supply. They do not correspond with the symbols that are on here, but I like this holder and it had just enough to hold the bits that I needed. But the screwdriver that I use for 90% of the maintenance I do on my knives is the Combat Beads Precision Driver Mark II. And as I've shown you many times, this thing is phenomenal. It's the best screwdriver out there. Um, there are fun ones that spin endlessly. Like I have a good screw one. What do we do with that? Is it over here? This good screw screwdriver is really cool. This is all Zerk and it just spins for eternity. And it is cool. It's got a cool factor, but I just keep coming back to the Combat Bead screwdriver because it has bit storage in the handle. So all the bits that I really truly need for taking a knife apart, 95% as I mentioned of my knives are right here. You've got a T8, a apparently I have two T8s, no that's a T6, T7, T9. Very rarely I'll need like a T10 or something else and that's where these come into play but for the most part, I can do most of it with just this screwdriver. So then finally, we have the Vero Fulcrum. This is the full size, and this, yes, has more Torx bits and a driver here in the end. I use this when I have a free spinning pivot that's got Torx on both sides. I can use this and just hold it still and turn with the Combat Beads driver. That's one way. Uh, another is to open up the knife, like so put side tension, so I'm pushing this way, put side tension on the pivot and then turn it. And sometimes that'll lock down whichever side of the pivot is uh, the female side of the Chicago screw. This just sometimes makes it easier. I, I thought it was in here. I'm missing something actually, because I had more of these uh, micro bits. I had a Weeha micro bit kit that was in here. Maybe I left it on my counter at my shop, I don't know, it's not here right now, but it was in here. It was another kit with bit holder like this right here for these micro bits, but they're missing. This also comes in handy for a situation like, this one's not this this bad, but like uh, let's say the PM2. When you take that apart, the lanyard tube will really cinch those two sides of the knife together. You can use something like this titanium pry bar and just wedge it in there and just twist it. And it will sometimes pop um, any of your backspacers or the lanyard tube or whatever, it'll it'll help ease those off without you know damaging anything. You can put it in there and just twist it a little bit and it, it gives you that leverage that's sometimes a little better, especially when you've got a sharp edge that's just waiting to cut you. So it's time to get everything back in here. And this is one of the things that I really like about having this pouch. When I just sit this stuff on my desk at home, it all gets strewn all about and I lose things. But if I'm using a pouch, I know where everything goes, and I know that immediately when I open it up if something's missing. So first things first, the pin goes in the back, as well as the field notes, it goes on the other side. All of the cleaning stuff, watch tool here, cheat sheet, and the lube. Ta-da, all done, back where it goes. So that's it, that's my knife maintenance kit. I hope you find it uh, informative and maybe you can take something out of this. Even if you don't need your own maintenance kit, there's some stuff in here that I think may be useful for some of you. So I hope that helps. Everything I talked about will be linked down below. Of course, those are affiliate links. So if you wanna purchase anything using those links, it helps support what I'm doing by giving us a little bit of a kickback. Doesn't cost you anything extra. You can also support what we're doing here by going to patreon.com forward slash bestmedc. But that's it for now. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, carry on.